Now then, just imagine a left-of-centre Prime Minister who had called for spending restraint before the crash and was still very popular now. A bit hard to get your head round, but I am describing Kevin Rudd, the Australian Prime Minister, who is with me now. Welcome, Prime Minister. Thanks for having me on your programme. Um, the G20, yeah. um, a crucial moment uh, for the world economy. Um, Australia's had how, how hard a time has Australia been having economically recently, and what's your prognosis for the next 12 months? Well, it's a global economic recession. It's affecting um, uh, all economies, developed and developing. And to put it into context, I mean, this is the first time in 2009 that we're going to see the global economy contract uh, in, uh, since the war. Mm. I mean, this is a big, big event in economic history. And you see the same in trade flows and investment flows. Therefore, uh, in Australia, we're affected like everyone else. We're performing relatively well against uh, most um, global economic benchmarks. Our banks are doing okay. But this is a global contagion. On your question about the G20, given that this is a global economic challenge, only the G20 has the global economic reach to provide the response necessary to begin to mend this global economic recession and to support the restoration of jobs around the world. It's pretty clear there's not going to be the huge coordinated fiscal stimulus that some have called for because not enough countries support that. So what in real terms do you want to get out of this? Do you think um, the world banking system needs to be radically reformed and is that the kind of story that could come out of this? Well let me take your assumption head on. I think it's absolutely wrong. Uh, mm. And let me tell you mm. why. You see, what we did back oh, in... On the fiscal stimulus? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Let me go back to where this began. Uh, the Washington um, G20 summit only in November last year. It agreed that as governments around the world, we would commission fiscal stimulus uh, as necessary and appropriate to support growth and jobs given the challenge ahead in the global economy. What's happened since then? Since then, governments around the world have agreed in calendar year 2009 on action already equal to about 2% of global GDP. That's 2% of a $63 trillion global economy. Mm -hmm. What does the IMF tell us about the impact of that? That action alone, equaling 2% of global GDP, means supporting nearly 20 million more jobs than would otherwise be the case. In other words, global unemployment in these economies would be 20 million worse. And I think it is absolutely important that we recognise the consistency of that. And let me just add yeah, sorry, can I just, just one further okay. point, one yeah. further point, and then you come back on me. Mm. In London, just a couple of weekends ago, you had a G20 finance ministers, including everybody, mm. Europeans, the Brits ourselves. What did it agree on? It agreed to continue to support fiscal stimulus and to use the International Monetary Fund to assess in the future what further stimulus beyond 2009 we may need. That is into 2010. What I see across these three critical meetings is actually consistency. And had we not acted, would you want 20 million more people unemployed? I don't think so. No, but uh, what we're talking about there is, as it were, past decisions already taken. No, Barack no, no. Barack Obama's an, agreement, done his. an agreement on how to handle it in the future as well. The mechanism being an IMF assessment as to how it's done. But, I think there's the a French, great. The French and the Germans say, you know no to another big fiscal stimulus. Britain has spent about as much money as is possible. The same is probably true of what Barack Obama is doing. There's not going to be a second wave of fiscal stimulus as a result of this week's meeting, is there? Well, let's go to the numbers. In America, you have fiscal stimulus of something like 5.4% um, of GDP. Mm -hmm. For us, about, um, I think, 4.6% of G GDP. The Germans, 3.6% um, of GDP. And in calendar year 2009, uh, people acting in broadly the same order of magnitude. Some differences here, some differences there. That's the action we commissioned only four or five months ago. It is now done. The jobs impact is about 20 million strong. Go to the future. What we've also agreed is, let's put some maths to this, use the International Monetary Fund, and all finance ministers, German, British, Australian, American, agreed only a few weekends ago, mm. that we would use the IMF to assess what we would need for calendar year 10. So I think there is a great and I think disproportionate emphasis about uh, dif disagreements at the margins when in fact much has concretely been achieved with a mechanism for the future. So we should not be looking to the final communique for more numbers and new numbers that we haven't seen before. But that was never the intention. Okay. I no, think so this is just clear about quite, this. quite wrong and a mechanism has been established for us to reflect on for what we need for the future. And there'll be a further summit 
well in time for 2010, I assume, which will actually look at what metrics would be needed then, what numbers then. I think so we, need to ask, we actually need to look at what's been done and the impact of what would have occurred in the global economy had that not occurred. So when George Soros, for instance, says that if this summit isn't a success, doesn't change things, the world is heading for depression, that's wrong. Well, the fiscal stimulus uh, debate that you and I have mm. just been engaged in is one of about four or five sets of integrated measures. The other is dealing with toxic assets on bank balance sheets. Progress has been achieved here in Britain and in America and elsewhere. A framework is agreed for, for how that should be done. Avoiding further uh, acts of protectionism. Dealing with the resources necessary for the IMF because if we don't have proper resources for the International Monetary Fund, the big problems emerging now in Central and Eastern Europe would in mm. fact rebound on the rest of the global economy. And in each of these four areas, there is real measurable progress and with a further work program for the future. And you think there needs to be another G20 meeting before too long to keep that progress moving forward? I think momentum is necessary. I think if you step back from all this and ask yourself this question, when else in modern economic history have global economies cooperated and coordinated across such a vast array of policy instruments? It hasn't happened. Gordon Brown has been in the centre of this at the, at the Washington summit, but most particularly in the lead up to this mm. one. And that coordination role on the part of the British has been first class. You're never going to get a perfect outcome in these circumstances. It's a political process. But against what has existed previous, I've got to say, we need to see the, the class as being more than half full okay. on these questions, rather than emphasising what um, has yet to be done. Everybody is focusing, for obvious reasons, on the financial crisis. Mm -hmm. But you've had some terrible fires in Australia. Um, there is also the huge question of climate change. Mm -hmm. Talk about another big summit on that as well, coming up, I think, before too long. How important is it that this financial crisis is a moment when people start to turn their economies in a different direction when it comes to low-carbon technologies and all of that? Uh, you're right to raise the fact that um, we have a challenge now of dealing with the global financial crisis, a real challenge in the economy and jobs, the, the, the interconnectedness of what happens uh, on uh, banks in the city of London and banks on Wall Street and what happens with jobs in Brisbane and what happens with jobs in Birmingham. These are all linked. But at the same time, what we need to also bear in mind is that this continued challenge of climate change is a massive economic challenge as well. It's very clear that the costs of, economic, the costs of inaction on climate change, in economic yeah. terms, uh, are far greater than the costs of action. So therefore, when we look at stimulus, we look at the other things that are necessary to deal with the economic crisis, right. we should also be taking steps to prepare ourselves for a more sustainable uh, carbon future as well. All right. For now, Kevin Rudd, thank you very much indeed.